if you have to write IELTS 200 times before you pass, please do. If you are a nurse and have the interest of writing IELTS or have registered for IELTS, then the information I'm going to share with you here in this video will go a long way to help you. One is going to change your mentality about the fact that IELTS is difficult. It's basically my experience with regards to this exam. You know, I passed this exam on the first attempt and I wish to share my experience with you guys. So in this video, I'm going to share with you about eight things that you need to do or that you need to have at the back of your mind when you have registered for IELTS or when you have the idea of writing these particular exams. And, you know, as a bonus tip, I'll be sharing with you the practice materials I used that did help me pass once and for all. Remember that I don't want you to lose your money. I don't want you to waste your time. I don't want you to waste your effort. Okay, my idea here is to help you pass out on the first attempt. So if you are registered or about registering for these exams, then this video is for you. You see, I've had a chance to speak with a lot of people who have interest in writing the IELTS. And, you know, as a nurse, if you had a desire to work in the UK, what happens is that you need to prove your English language proficiency. And one way to do this is to write the IELTS, which is the International English Language Testing System. But there are people who have interest in working in the UK as nurses, as midwives, as doctors, but they fear to write these exams. What I would say is that even if you are registered for these exams and you are still scared, um, I'm going to share with you eight ideas or eight advice. I call it pieces of advice you need to have at the back of your mind so that it gingers you to go all out and pass once and for all. I strongly believe that should you watch this video to the end, your mindset about IELTS will restart and as a matter of fact, you go in with confidence to pass once and for all. The first advice I will give you is that see IELTS as an investment opportunity. What do I mean by this? You see, when I decided to write IELTS, I felt like the amount involved was too huge. And for some people, that is the reason why they are not even thinking of writing this exam because they haven't got that amount of money. But you see, when you look at it from the point of investment, then you wouldn't have to struggle, you wouldn't have to stay back registering for these exams. Another day, you would want to work in the UK and that is one requirement you need to be able to make this a fulfillment. At the end of the day, when you get a chance to work in the UK, you earn higher. And as a matter of fact, I mean, you'll be able to reap that kind of money you invested in the IELTS. So what I want to say is that if you want to have that kind of confidence, if you want to have that kind of sale to write IELTS at peace, then see it as an investment opportunity. Don't just see IELTS as an English exam, but see it as an opportunity to help you up your financial capability. Because once you pass IELTS, it's not a chance of registering the UK and MC, and that is the first step of becoming a nurse in the UK. And once you get a chance to become a nurse, you know, you are paid higher than what you used to get in your own country. The second piece of advice I will give you if you want to write IELTS or if you are about registering for IELTS is for the fact that keep mute. Don't tell anybody about the fact that you want to write these exams. The reason is this. There are people out there who would want to write these exams, but they are scared. Now, they are scared of the amount they have to invest in getting this done. They are scared of the stories of people who have failed. They are scared of a whole lot of mysteries surrounding the IELTS. Now, imagine going to tell this person that you want to write IELTS. The only thing the person can offer you is that don't write. And he or she will be able to give you massive reasons why you don't have to write these exams. You feel the amount to register is too much and a whole lot of that. But as I talked to you about the first point, see IELTS as an investment. Now, when you see it that way, register, keep mute, and then probably write on a low key. So what I would say is that register at a low key, write at a low key, and then pass at a low key. The only people I can confidently say you can talk to are those who are already in the game with you. Because at the end of the day, if you are talking to them, it's like you are sharing ideas. You are getting the feel of how they feel about the exams. And at the end of the day, it also gives that kind of zeal to also go out and then write. So now, I also say that seek advice from experienced people. The only people you can seek experience from are those who have already written the exams and passed. You may know a lot of people out there 
who have, at the end of the day, written these exams and have successfully made it. Speak to them and then get their experience. I mean, how the exams is like, how they felt on the examination day, um, the kind of advice they can give you to pass, and a whole lot of information you can get from them. I mean, it may happen, I don't know anybody who have written these exams and, you know, you are wondering who should I even talk to. There are a lot of people who have shared their experience on YouTube. You can tap into that and I also think that will give you the confidence to pass once and for all. Another advice I can give you here is that go the extra mile. Practice harder than what you meet on the DD. We've got some practice materials that are probably advanced than the normal Cambridge or the standardized IELTS that you write on the DD. We've got IELTS 101, which is much more like the reading test. You know, it's advanced. The facilities are longer than what you meet on the DD. So what I did was, you know, I stuck to when I had practiced the Cambridge for some time. Um, and it was about two weeks for me to write the actual test. What happened was I had to dump the Cambridge somewhere and then focus on this advanced reading test. You know, I did that because I wanted to train ahead of, I wanted to go the extra mile. So it's like you want to run a race and you know, the race should be run on the hill, okay? So if you want to go the extra mile, you just go and train on the mountain. Now, training on the mountain makes it easier for you to apparently have that kind of flow on the hill. So one way to make the IELTS much easier and easier for you is to practice with difficult practice materials. Don't just focus on the Cambridge. I mean, it's a standardized version. I mean, it may happen that that will be the similar something. I mean, the similar structure you meet on the DD. But I don't think that will be helpful. Get those practice materials that are more advanced than what you meet on the DD. Because in that way, it's like you are going the extra mile. The exams become very, very, very easy for you. And I think that is what helped me in passing the reading test on the first attempt. One thing I did struggle about us was the fact that I had difficulty with the reading test. So the plan was, okay, um, I have to go the extra mile. I have to get practice materials that are more difficult than the um, actual one that I'll be doing. So I resorted to using two practice materials. I'll leave them in the description box. Just check that one out, okay? I started using this difficult practice materials on another day when I got to the examination center and I saw the standardized reading test in front of me. I felt it was much shorter and uh, easier for me to finish within the stipulated time. So what I would say is that just make sure that you are practicing with more complicated stuff and at the end of the day, I mean, the whole stuff would appear easier for you. Now, this takes me to my next advice avoid the feeling of inadequacy what do i mean by this you may practice out on so many occasions you may have practiced for let's say a month for two months there are some people who have practiced for like six months and they think that they are still not well to, they think they are still not prepared to write these exams and pass on the first attempt you see what i want to say is that that kind of feeling is normal the feeling of inadequacy and it sometimes comes with the fact that you are scared of the exam you don't want to fail you don't want to waste away money time and energy just choose a specific time say one month two months three months okay i want to prepare for this specific viewer and when the time is due i'm going to write just put in your maximum best this is because no matter how many years or how many months you prepare for these exams the feeling of inadequacy will still be there so just know that one month is enough for you two months is enough for you three months is enough for you just give yourself time okay in six months time i'm writing ielts okay in one month's time i'm writing okay in two weeks time i am writing whichever time you give yourself the feeling of inadequacy will be there so you can give yourself three years and you still feel like okay i've not prepared enough so let me give myself more time so just know that the feeling of inadequacy with regards to the out is normal and it's up to you to work your way around it have a defense mechanism have a defense mechanism what do i mean by this exams environment is some way there are some people who might have practiced very well spent months spent some weeks to prepare and they get to the exams environment it's like everything they've learned everything is gone it's because the IELT environment feels very heavy and you should be able to develop measures to contain it and that is why there is the need for you to have a defense mechanism so the question i want to ask you is what do you do when you are consumed by tension what do you do when you are consumed by fear and that is the point of developing a defense mechanism so with this the question i would want to ask is if you are consumed by the tension in an environment what keeps you calm is it about 
laughing? Is it about watching a comedy? Is it about interacting with other people? Is it about reading a book? Is it about thinking about, I mean, having this kind of imagination? You know, discover what keeps you calm in a tension environment because the art environment is one. One battle at a time, forget and then continue. What do I mean by this? The IELTS comes in four aspects. We have the speaking test, the reading test, the listening test, and the writing test. You are one person fighting four battles. You are fighting against four aspects of the IELTS. And if you are so lucky and then you perform well in the speaking test, apparently it gives you the confidence to go into the listening test. It gives you the confidence to go into the reading and then the writing. Why I say one battle at a time is that, you know, I've had friends who have written the speaking test first and, you know, because they couldn't answer one or two questions, they felt like they didn't perform exceptionally well. So it's like they keep thinking about this and then it affects them in the other three aspects, which is the writing, listening and then the reading. So what I would say is that it's one battle at a time. If you finish with your speaking test and, I mean, upon reflection, you realize that you didn't do well. Forget about it, it's passing gone. There's nothing you can do about it. Focus on the remaining three and then kill it once and for all. So I had this friend who did the speaking test first and you know, he made mention of the fact that there were some of the questions he couldn't answer so well. And he thinks he's going to get a lower band score. So I told him he should forget about it and then focus on the remaining three because so far as he wasn't mute, so far as he was able to answer some questions, then the possibility that he's going to get band seven and above is high. I think the whole thing kept eating into him and he kept dwelling on the speaking test. I mean the mistakes he committed in the speaking test and that did affect him in the listening, reading and then the writing. And the sad aspect is that when the results came he had passed in the speaking test. He had 7.0 and you know because he focused on the things he didn't do well in the speaking test, it did affect him in the listening, the reading and the writing. So you know Focus on one battle at a time. If you finish with your listening test, another day you realize that you couldn't answer some of the questions. Forget about it. The reading test is right in front of you. Focus on that. That is the battle in front of you. Kill it. For all you know, the answer you are contemplating about might be the correct one. And you keep thinking about it and then you lose your focus or you lose your concentration. Once you finish with your listening test, dump it somewhere. I mean, just lock it somewhere in your mind. Whether you're able to answer some of the questions or not, focus on the reading test. Once you are done with the reading test, dump it somewhere. The next thing is the writing test. Focus. So it's one at a time. Don't be doing the reading test and then be thinking of the mistakes you committed in the listening test. Don't be doing the writing test and be thinking of the questions you couldn't answer in the reading test. That will affect you. That would probably steal your attention and then concentration. And you know, that would possibly go against you. If you have to write IELTS 200 times before you pass, please do. This is the last advice I'm leaving you. Um, you know, it's weird. I mean, why would I say such a thing? I don't know why I'm saying this, but you know, as I said, IELTS is a form of investment. Except that you are just, you don't have any specific reason why you're writing these exams. This was the advice I received from a good friend of mine who probably kept encouraging me saying that no matter how, even if I should fail 200 times, I should still keep persisting. And he also made mention of the fact that if success was easy to achieve, everybody in this world would have been successful. If IELTS is easy to pass, everybody, I mean, there have been billions of people who have written IELTS and not all have passed. So it calls for determination, it calls for perseverance and that kind of, I mean, consistency to be able to get it. So what I'm saying is that IELTS is an investment opportunity and if you have written once and failed, I mean it shouldn't end there. You have to try again. Keep writing until you pass. So when I heard a story of somebody who had written 15 times and was still not giving up, I came to understand this concept. So initially I was asking myself, so why would this person still be persistent to pass the IELTS after 15 failures? You know, so it's a matter of sticking to the reason why you are writing IELTS. If you haven't got any concrete reason for which you are writing, then you give up so easily. You write one and then apparently you fail and it's like, I'm not going in again. We know once you fail, you are wasting time, energy and then money. But the question is, after you've passed, how is the IELTS going to help you read back everything you've lost? Okay, 
ask yourself this question and i think you will not give up in your IELTS journey